Mr. Tomek, how well do you know Mr. Clegg? We met a couple times, Clegg and I, that's all. A couple times, socially. When was the last time you saw or spoke to him? A couple of years ago, some friend brought him to my bar in Detroit. It must be, uh, must be two years. Were you acquainted with the deceased, Al Mando? Not me. I never heard of him. Not until they picked me up and said I killed him. Did you ever at any time have a conversation with Mr. Clegg about Al Mando? Why should I? I didn't know the man. Look, I'm a businessman. I own a cocktail lounge in Detroit. I came here for one day to visit a sick friend and take care of a little business. And that's all. Will you please tell the court the name of that person you visited? Joe Rask. He had an operation. Will you He's please speak up so the jury can hear you? His name is Joe Rask. He uh, had an operation. He's over at General Hospital. Ask him. Hey, ask the nurse. She saw me. And he made sure she did. Now I'll ask him where he was the day of the killing. Now, the 12th of October, which was the date that uh, Mr. Mando was killed, will you please tell the court where you were? I left here at 7 o'clock in the morning. I drove a friend's car back to Detroit. Arriving when? 1.30 in the afternoon. Anybody in Detroit see you? My bartender. And my wife. The bartender's an organization boy, and his wife can't testify against him. Now, the approximate time of Mr. Mando's death has been established at 2.15 in the afternoon. Will you please tell the court where you were at that time? Tending my bar in Detroit. I remember it very clearly. I was very tired after the long drive back. My bartender's wife had been expecting a baby. When I got there and checked in at the bar, he asked for permission to take her to the hospital. I said, OK. I said I'd cover for him, and I went to work behind the bar. I called my wife. I asked her to come in and help me out. I'm a maid. I change the linens and straighten the rooms in dust. Did you work at the Highway Motel on the 12th of October last? Yes, sir. I haven't missed a day for three years. I want you to tell the court, Mrs. George, what you saw and what you heard in the early afternoon of the day in question. Well, it was after one o'clock because I had just had my lunch. And I remember coming out of room number six to get some fresh linen. And just as I got outside, two men were coming out of room number eight, and they got into a car and drove away. Mm -hmm. As they left, were they having a conversation? Yes, sir. Did you hear it? Oh, I was just a few feet away. I could hear it all right. Now, to the best of your recollection, would you repeat to the court what you heard? Well, one man asked, where are you taking me now? And the other man said, over to my office. You want a job, don't you, Al? I'm sure that was the conversation. You want a job, don't you, Al? Right. Is she right? Well, like I well. Said, they, they got into a car and drove away. Well, what? And about an hour later, it must have been about 2 o'clock, just one man came back. Are you sure of the time? Oh, I'm sure, all right, because it takes me an hour to clean three rooms, and I had just cleaned my third room when this one fella came back. And the next morning when I bought my paper, there was this picture of this man called Al. It said he had been murdered. Did it say where the body was found? Yes, in a stone quarry. That's about, oh, three miles from the motel. They don't work it any longer. All right, Mrs. George. I want you to look around the court and tell us if the man you saw with Mr. Mando is in this courtroom. Yes, sir. Would you please identify him? Now, don't be frightened, Mrs. George. Just take your time. That's him. The younger man. Would the defendant please rise, Your Honor? Defendant Tomek, please rise. Mrs. George, just take your time. Are you absolutely sure that this is the man you saw with Mr. Mando? Yes, that's him. That's him, all right. Clerk, let the record show the witness has identified defendant Ralph Tomac. Nothing further, Your Honor. If the court please, we request a brief recess. I'd like to consult with my clients. Court will reconvene in 30 minutes. Mr. George, do you wear glasses? Sometimes. Do you wear them when you work? Yes, sometimes. 
Were you wearing them the day that you say you saw the defendant, uh, Tomek? I'm not sure. I think so. But you're not sure? No. How far would you say it is from where you are now sitting to where Miss... Uh, to where uh, Mr. Tomek is sitting? About 12 or 15 feet. Uh, excuse me, Mrs. George. Your Honor, may I uh, interrupt the cross-examination of this witness for a moment? Why, Mr. Luther? Well, with the court's indulgence, I would like to talk to my clients for a moment. For a moment. What is it? Ask her to identify him again. But she just did. Yeah, I know, but she was so far away, she might have made a mistake. But ask her. Now, be a good boy. Ask her. I don't think that's going to... Look, do don't think. Just ask her, please. Miss George, I'm going to ask the defendant Tomek to step closer to you. Now, take your time, look at him carefully, and tell the court whether you can positively identify him as the man you saw with Al Mando. Well, Mrs. George? Well, is he or is he not the man you saw? Well, now that I see him up close, I'm not so sure. I thought maybe he was... A, I, I just don't know. I'm not sure. I'm just not sure. Your Honor, may I approach the bench? Yes. Sit down, Mr. Tomek. Who brought Almando to you? I told you, I don't know Almando. I was not at the motel. That woman had the wrong guy. How many times do I have to tell you? We have here the guest register that the Highway Motel used during the month of October. On the 11th day of October, one day before Almando was killed, a Mr. Joe Wenko registered. Was that name familiar to you? You know my name. Isn't Wenko your wife's maiden name? Or shall we compare your handwriting with a signature in this register? That stupid, stupid punk. I'll ask you once more, Mr. Tomek, who brought Al Mando to you? He trusted you, didn't he? I, I was just trying to help him. You were just trying to help him, how? Huh? By taking him to the highway motel where Tomek was waiting to kill him? No! No! Yes! No! 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 You better do no! something. What would you suggest I do? What? I'd know what to do. Oh, I'd know. I'm all right. You, uh, you want some water? I tried to explain. I, I told him about Al and me, how, how we grew up together. He, he said, he said, Get him out of the apartment. Get him to Tomek. He said, we just want to talk to him. That's all, just talk. He promised me they weren't going to kill Al. He told me Tomek was just going to throw a scare into him so that Al wouldn't testify at the new tax trial. I didn't know they were going to kill him. I didn't. I, I, I thought they were just going to talk to him. They were just going to warn him. Uh, did Earl Clegg tell you this? Yes. And did you believe him? Did you really believe him, Victor? Well, if, if I'd known they were going to kill Al, if I'd known they were... What would you have done, Victor? What would I have done? Yes. Well, I would have protected... I would have protected my... My brother. <laughs> 